Google has finally released BARD and I've got access to it. So today we're gonna to ask ourselves, to BARD or not to BARD? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look and see how does BARD do in a scenario helping us with our power apps. So the idea here is we're gonna run it through the same test that we already ran ChatGPT through and Bing Chat and compare the results and see does BARD bring anything to the table for us. So let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. First thing you should do is jump over to bard.google.com and sign up for the preview. Remember, this doesn't just work. You've got to get on the preview list and then wait on them to add you. Honestly, I got on the list last week and I'm still not on there, but thankfully Nicola was able to get in access almost instantly. So I guess they don't like me. I don't know. Either way, make sure you go to bard.google.com and get signed up if you want to start playing with this. Okay, so switch over here to browser tab is Herb you can see that mm, Bard looks about like you'd expect, right? We've got some stuff over here on the left, and then down here we got the prompt. Now, the one thing I don't like is Bard activity here. You know, so ChatGPT does the best to this. ChatGPT, I can see every conversation I've ever had with it, and I can jump back into the context of that conversation. With Bard's activity, it just shows you the, what you previously prompted it, but not its own responses. So anyway, so we'll go down here, let's ask it as a, Good question, right? What is wrap for Power Apps? And so I like this question because this is one that ChatGPT 3.5 failed with because it was stopped training in the end of 2021. And basically this came out in 2022. So it doesn't know. So ChatGPT 3.5 gets this wrong. Bing Chat was able to answer this with a really smart question answer. And look here, Bard also has a great understanding of what this is. And so Boom, there it is. Look, it even says, hey, here's my source, which we'll talk about in a second. But one of the things I also like about this, not only is it a good answer, if you go up here to view other drafts, you can actually see that it wrote three versions of this response to me. And if you click on the different ones, each one's different, right? This one doesn't have bullet points. This one has numbered order. So it has a lot of different options. And so what we're seeing here is that a lot of times if I ask it a question and it's almost right, then what I can do is if I check through the drafts, I might find one that is more right or is just written in a way that makes more sense to my tiny brain, right? I like bullet points, so that would really help me. Also, you know, that's just another good reminder is that, you know, all of these answers, they're never canned answers. It's not like, hey, if he asks this question, then fill in the blank with this answer, right? No, it takes your question, it figures out what you mean, and then it comes up with an answer every time. So, Every answer is unique. If you answer the same question a hundred times, you're gonna get a hundred different answers. Hopefully they're all in the same ballpark, but I'll be honest, sometimes they are wildly different depending on its mood. So you just gotta, you know, do. And, that, and that's across all three tools. I don't want you to think this is unique to Bar. That is all three tools have the same behavior. But so we're like, all right, cool. That is good, that is helpful. And so look, it even shows me my related topics. If we uncheck this Google it thing, it would not. You could regenerate the answer. And then of course you can, you know, tell it how you feel about it. We're happy, we're just gonna roll with it. So now what we wanna do is we wanna say, can you please help me get started? We'll hit enter there and see what happens. After just a few seconds, look, it gave me steps, right? It's like, hey, do this, then this, then this. And so those are valid steps to get started. Now notice this time though, it did not give me a source for these. So this is something that I found interesting about Bard. So if you go over to uh, Bing Chat, you know, basically every time you ask it a question, right, it says, hey, here are the sources. These are the things that I read to come up with your answer. Bard, on the other hand, what we're seeing is that if you ask it a question and it steals a lot of content from a source. So in this case, it stole, stole most of this from the learnmicrosoft.com. It will reference that. With the follow on question though, it's like, hey, these are my words, I made these up. And so it is not going to reference it. Now I could still click Google it and it would tell me what to you know Google if I wanted to go read other opinions on this. But I just think that's interesting that it's not always gonna tell you kind of what drove it. Okay, so cool. So Bart does a good job with that question. So next up, when I was doing the Bing video, it happened that week on Reddit, somebody had asked a question about filtering power apps and you know there was a bunch of back and forth. Somewhere in the comments of the post, Someone said, oh, there's a Shane Young video for that. And they kind of described the video. They didn't give a link. They didn't give the title. They just kind of said there's a video for that. So I asked Bing to figure out what video was and Bing did a great job. We're going to ask Google the same thing. 
All right, so hey Bard, here's the post. Can you, you know, tell us what video they're referencing? And Bard basically says, nope. All right, and what Bard's really saying here, I've kind of come to understand, is it's like, I don't understand what you want me to do here. So I'm just gonna pretend like I can't do it. But we can kind of help Bard, right? So if you go here and say copy, and then we're gonna go down here and say, please read this post so we can discuss. And we'll hit enter. And so right now what's happening is Bard's going out to the internet. It's reading that page. It's consuming all the information. It's putting it into its language model. And so it's also going to then spit us out a summary. There you go of kind of what they're talking about. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to ask it the same question again. Will you please find me the Shane Young YouTube video discussed in the post? Right, remembering that once again, the post is not about my video. It just happens to be one of the random comments. And so here, this time it's like, I, I can't help you. As a guy who makes videos, this is super frustrating. One of the other times I asked it, it said, oh, here is a video and it was a completely wrong video, but it was at least one of my videos about Power Apps. So at least it was found something about me. And the last pass of testing I just did, it actually found a video about filtering, which was in the general ballpark. So the times that it's found me videos though, it said, hey, here, there is a video. Right or wrong, I then said, can you give me the URL to the video? And then it just says, no, I can't share that with you. So. That is something else I found frustrating is even if it finds the video that I'm looking for, it will not share the URL with me, which, you know, Bing does a great job of, oh yeah, here it is. And even puts in a little video viewer. So this is another, eh, not great Google. All right. So that's kind of research digging in, right? So now let's, let's kind of switch gears a little bit and let's look at how it handles our Power Apps code. So we'll switch over to Power App. We'll grab our little lovely chunk of code here and we're gonna copy it, and then we will switch and say, hey, will you please explain this code to me? And we'll hit enter. And so we just pasted the code straight in there, and so what we're expecting here is a nice summary of what is it doing, right? Because this can help you if you're looking at code someone else wrote and you wanna understand kind of what they're doing. And so look, it jumps in here, and it gives me an explanation. It's not as thorough of an explanation as I want, but I could ask it for more details. I could dig a little deeper. Overall, it understood the code enough to throw words. And remember, look, I would probably do a better, it'd be easier for me to consume this by the number because I'd be like, what does line three do? Uses a loop to do blah, 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 right? So remember, use your drafts. I give that a pass, right? So now I'm gonna say one of my favorite things with ChatGPT, right? Throw out some code and say co code comment this for me so I can copy it back in and get my comments, right? Like it's one of my big time savers these days. So let's ask Bard to give me that. Bard says, no, thank you. This, this was really like when I was like, womp, womp, womp. This disappointed me. But so, you know, one of my primary uses of these AI tools and primarily chat GPT for me, if we're being honest, is helping me with my code, right? It is code comments. It's writing large blocks of code that I don't want to write. Heck, I even had it write a regex expression the other day for an is match function that was pretty awesome, right? ChatGPT is doing great things to help me be a better Power Apps maker. That's what this video is about. Google's like, nah, I don't really want to do that for you. Let's try a different one. Let's see if we can make it even easier. Maybe it'll do a better job. So over here in this app, remember this was one of the early demos we did, but basically this is my standard HTML that I steal from W3 schools for my PDF demo. And I was like, hey, I want it to be awesome, right? I want some formatting. I want this lovely um, shading. I want to add the report date column. And basically I was able to get Bing and ChatGPT to do this for me and do it well. So let's try it again. Control A, Control C. We'll jump back over to Bard. All right, how about this? Please update this code to use inline styles because that's how you get it to display nicely in Power Apps as you change the HTML from having everything up here in the head to using inline styles. So we will say submit. And what's really nice about this as well is because there's a concat here in the middle, you know, the, AI tools got to understand Power Apps and understand what that concat is doing to update these text or TD elements inside the concat, right? Like to me, this is like two layers of understanding. So we'll do it. So it says, hey, I did it. But if you look, all it, let's well, see, it added a table style border. It didn't update my TDs, it didn't update my TRs. And it left the style up here at the top, which you know was also doing the same thing. So let's try it just to be sure. So we'll go in here, we'll copy this. They also don't have a great copy function. You can come down here to the bottom and click on this and say copy, but it recopies everything. It doesn't just copy the, co the code block. So mostly it's worthless to me. Okay, so we'll go over here to screen one. We'll insert an HTML text control. And then 
We'll paste this in between those. All right, it's broken. This has happened most of the times to me. And so you can see that when it added it, it's decided to use double quotes instead of single quotes. Nope. Right there, let's fix that. Fix that. And then it lost the quote that was here, right? It clearly doesn't understand the code, quite frankly, is really what I'm seeing here. But with a little bit of work, I was able to fix it. And so you can see that it kind of improved. So at this point, I could banter back and forth with, I could probably you know try to walk it through. But this example worked just like that with the other two tools. So overall, like it just made me go, it made me real sad. It did. Uh, if you look in here, let's just go check its um, drafts, though it did offer drafts. So that draft also has not what do we want. And how about this draft? Mm, no, right? So didn't do a good job. Um, I will tell you one of the times I did this, the draft was closer, still not right, but closer. But these are these are pretty indicative for most of my testing. Is it, it just misses. Now let's try to ask another thing. Can you add a column for report date and set it to today? So we'll say play. All right, so notice that it changed stuff. I don't know, it looks a little more complicated than it did before. So I don't know, let's just copy it. And then if we jump over to Power Apps, Control A, delete. All right, so it's still broken. That's not really a surprise. So I'm gonna fix that. I'll just pause this out of the video for a second. Okay, so I got it fixed, but you can see that it used date.today. So it didn't understand. Now let's see though, what I've, sometimes it happens if we look through the drafts. Oh, so that one used the today function. So I think it knew what it was. Right, like it, it was in the right ballpark, and maybe if I had told it to you that it was Power Apps, it would have done it. I kind of would have thought since I'd been using Power Apps, it would have surmised that on its own. Um, but there you go. So you can see that it kind of works. So this is what I've been seeing, right? Is that you know HTML? It seems to understand enough. It seems to be able to finagle that. But man, my Power Apps code, which is what I care about, it can't do. I tried the reg regex test. It can't do either. Overall, I just feel like Google Bard. It's not to be, right? It's a big letdown for me on using it for what I want, right? Because I'm here to make my Power Apps work easier and better and faster and more efficient. And, you know, I want to be the 10x Power Apps person. Google Bard is not helping at all with that. Now, I have played with it a little bit around creating content, analyzing web pages, things like that. It's it's done better, right? It's It seems to understand that language model stuff okay. But once again, I'm, it's not what I'm here for. So if you, I'm sure there's a thousand videos on the internet that talk about all that stuff. I'm not going to get into that. I, I wanted to do these things because this is the same test that I put ChatGPT through, I put Bing Chat through, and I've put Bard through. And I have to say that I still use ChatGPT the most. Um, you know, With the caveat that Bing does a good job if I need to go explore the internet as well. But for the most of the stuff, I don't. So. Um, I guess the only question is now is should I retry all this with a chat GPT-4 video? Okay, I also have that, but chat GPT-4 is so much slower and I the answers in 3.5 are good, so I don't think I'll do that. But, you know, leave me comments if you think I should do differently. So the other thing I want to remind you guys, right, is that AI, right, this stuff is not meant to replace you. Quit saying things like that. Quit thinking things like that. This stuff is to make you better, right? AI is not going to take your job. Someone that's great at AI might take your job. So be the person that's great at AI. You should be hands-on with this stuff. You should be using it every day, figuring it out, learning how to better be better at prompting it. So if you need help with that, remember here at Power Apps 91, we're getting customers already. They're starting to say, hey, can we do engagements around the AI co-pilot ecosystem and try to understand where it fits their business? So we'd happily consult with you on that. We, of course, will build and do all your projects. We also have all the fun training, and I'm thinking about doing a AI training class, but I haven't, I don't know. Do, do you, would you be interested in a training class that was all about using AI with Power Platform? Like, I'm not becoming an AI person. We're not shutting down Power Apps 911 to become AI 911. I should go steal that name, shouldn't I? But what, um, but what I am thinking about is, could I make one that goes through all the different AI tools for Power Platform? and then augmented by ChatGPT to help you guys. So if that's an interesting class to you, notes.
comments. All right. And with all that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.